From the late 80s to the mid 90s, the NBA quickly expanded as the league went from 23 teams to 29 teams. Charlotte, Miami, Minneapolis, and Orlando were awarded franchises. Then the NBA decided to journey north with expansion, which included Canada's biggest city. 90 Sports and Soldier presents the Toronto Raptors in the 90s. On November 4, 1993, Toronto became the NBA's 28th franchise. As for the name of the team, fans submitted preferences for the team's moniker. These were the finalists and obviously, the Raptors became the team name, which was most likely influenced from the popularity of the blockbuster movie Jurassic Park. As for the team itself, former Pistons great Isaiah Thomas was a GM and also part owner. Former Pistons assistant Brendan Malone, who Thomas obviously knew well, became the first ever head coach in franchise history. The next step was to fill out the roster. First with the expansion draft. Toronto had the first pick due to a coin flip, and surprisingly and very unusually, a former NBA All-Star who was in his prime was available. The Raptors selected BJ Armstrong first overall in the expansion draft. However, Armstrong refused to play for the Raptors and thus, a trade was made as Armstrong went to the Warriors in exchange for basically Carlos Rogers and Victor Alexander. Here are the rest of the players Toronto selected in the expansion draft. The only name I thought that was interesting was D'Antonio Wingfield who was young with a lot of potential. The 6'8 small forward who left the University of Cincinnati only after a season really didn't fulfill his potential. As for the 1995 NBA draft, Toronto was selecting 7th overall and drafted 5'10 point guard Damon Stoudemire who could really score despite his small stature. Then in the second round, the Raptors selected shooting guard Jimmy King who was part of the Fab Five. The 1995-1996 season started off with a lot of energy. Elvin Robertson scored the first points in Raptors history and also scored 30 points to lead the Raptors to a 94-79 win in their first game ever. Toronto finished the 95-96 season with a 21-61 record which is somewhat expected for an NBA expansion franchise. Damon Stoudemire would become Rookie of the Year and an interesting in-season trade was made with the acquisition of one of the better defensive guards in the league in Doug Christie. The highlight of the season may have been when the Raptors defeated the Bulls who went on to set an NBA record at the time for wins in a season. But surprisingly, Brendan Malone would get fired after only one season, as the reports about Isaiah Thomas and Brendan Malone clashing and having philosophical differences. For the next season, the Raptors hired assistant Daryl Walker as a new coach. Walker and Thomas were teammates in Detroit. Toronto had the second selection in the famed 1996 NBA draft and selected Marcus Camby. The skinny athletic big man with long arms was not a bust. He was tremendous on defense, but unfortunately, there are those who probably expected more out of him on offense. One trade of note to make, the Raptors did acquire Walt Williams, who was an underrated scorer when he was healthy. The Raptors also took a chance on draft bust Sean Respert, hoping he would live up to his projected scoring ability, but that didn't come into fruition. As for the rest of the season, the Raptors did improve and finish 30-52, which also included another win against the Bulls. Enter the 1997-1998 season and the easiest way I can describe this year was chaotic. But I'll start off by saying that with the ninth overall selection in the NBA draft, the Raptors selected Tracy McGrady. This was the third straight season where a high schooler was drafted. During this period, high schoolers really had a rough adjustment heading into the NBA and were not receiving a lot of minutes. McGrady's rookie season was for the most part pedestrian and had not yet truly introduced himself to the basketball world. As for the rest of the team, here is where the chaos started. According to an article by Roger Sherman on SBNation.com, Sherman wrote that Thomas started angling for more power. Unsatisfied with his 9% ownership stake in the team, he tried to become the team's majority owner. This did not work out, so in November 1997, just a few games into the year, he sold his ownership in the team and walked out as GM. Sherman continued to write that Thomas left the team in utter turmoil as the Raptors began the 97-98 season 1-19 that included a 17-game losing streak. Then on February 13, 1998, Daryl Walker resigned as head coach and Butch Carter was named interim head coach. More on Carter later on. Also on that day, Toronto traded disgruntled guard Damon Stoudemire to the Portland Trailblazers. Stoudemire demanded a trade after not liking the direction of the team and due to the departure of Isaiah Thomas. The Raptors received Kenny Anderson, Gary Trent, Elvin Williams, and a 1998 first round pick and a 1998 second round pick. Anderson refused to report to the Raptors and did not want to play in Canada. Consequently, the Raptors traded Anderson to the Celtics as the main return was Chauncey Billups. Billups at the time was far from being the all-star type of player he was in Detroit. 
The point guard's time in Toronto was very brief. The Raptors finished a 97-98 season with a horrendous 16-66 record. During the offseason, the destruction of what Isaiah Thomas briefly built continued as the Raptors traded Marcus Camby for Charles Oakley and Sean Marks. But the most important trade for the Raptors in the 90s took place during the 1998 NBA Draft. With the fourth selection, the Toronto Raptors drafted Antoine Jameson. Meanwhile, with the fifth pick, the Golden State Warriors selected Vince Carter. These two teams then swapped these players, plus the Raptors received cash considerations, and this move really put Toronto Raptors basketball on the map. Carter was obviously electric, but I think for many, especially for myself, didn't expect Carter to score like he did in the NBA. Now part of that was due to the system at North Carolina, but Carter wasn't allowed to isolate too much, and most of the shots were going to Antoine Jameson and Shimon Williams. Nonetheless, Toronto had perhaps the most entertaining player in the NBA. During a short to 98-99 season, the Raptors winning percentage improved, with a lot of promise heading into the 99-2000 season. Toronto obviously had an ultra-talented player in Vince Carter, a nice group of veterans like Charles Oakley and Antonio Davis, who was acquired in a trade with Indiana. Furthermore, this season would also be Tracy McGrady's breakout season. Toronto finished the 99-2000 season 45-37, but despite getting the Raptors to their first ever playoff appearance, head coach Butch Carter was fired. Now that might sound surprising, but here's a short version of what happened with Butch Carter during the season. Coach Carter first brought in his friend, rapper Master P, to training camp. The New Orleans rapper was clearly not on the same level as the NBA players. Butch Carter basically said it was an attempt to deflect some of the media interest away from Vince Carter. Then Butch Carter accused the NBA of trying to get Vince Carter out of Canada and to play in the U.S. Then heading into the Raptors playoff series against the Knicks, Carter released a book and it contained a controversial chapter where he accused his old college coach Bobby Knight of racist behavior. In days before Toronto's first playoff game, Carter filed a $5 million defamation lawsuit against former Raptor Marcus Camby, who is now a member of the Knicks at this time, who called Butch Carter a liar in the newspaper article. After the move was widely condemned, Mr. Carter withdrew the suit, but then drew the ire of some of his players when he openly denounced the team's lack of leadership. Lastly, Butch Carter made headlines again after he made a move for Glenn Grunwald's job as general manager. This was just too much for the team to handle as Butch Carter was dismissed. There was speculation that all this led to Tracy McGrady subsequently leaving Toronto to sign in his home state with the Orlando Magic. On an episode of The Jump on ESPN, McGrady said he wished he would have stayed with the Toronto Raptors and see what they could have built together there. It was a tough decision for him to leave Toronto after playing with Carter for two years. The pull of his home proved to be too much. However, with Vince Carter as one of the top players in the NBA, a Hall of Fame coach now in charge, and with a solid group of veterans, Toronto was able to be competitive in the East. The Raptors' best season around this time was during the 2000-2001 season, where the Raptors upset the Knicks in the first round, but then lost to the eventual Eastern Conference champions, the Philadelphia 76ers, in seven games. Toronto then started to decline, which forced the Raptors to subsequently clean house which led to Vince Carter being traded to New Jersey. The 90s were some tough years for the Raptors, but acquiring Vince Carter changed the direction greatly for this franchise, and thus it's hard to forget this era in Toronto Raptors history. The Toronto Raptors in the 90s 